and welcome to the Millbrook Railroad and today I need to do some work on the milling machine. Now uh, I, I haven't done a video on this milling machine yet but it's a hodgepodge of different parts from different machines and uh, a friend of mine gave it to me so well let's make it work right? Well, the last part I need to make it work at least sort of for this particular job here I need something that'll fit into a half inch collet. These are Y collets, which is, why are we using Y collets? It's so unstandard, but here we are. So I, I need to uh, come up with something that goes into a half inch Y collet, which is about all I've got, and goes to a Jacobs taper number two. So uh, yeah, here we are. Let's get to busy on the milling machine. I mean, you know, let's get busy on the lathe and uh, turn apart so I can fix the milling machine, so I can do a slot here. Now we're over here on the surface plate, and let me explain my dilemma. These are the collets that I have for the milling machine. These are all of the collets that I have for the milling machine. Every last one of them, three. And uh, these are why collets? Why collets aren't exactly easy to come by. So I hear you loud and clear in the comments. What the heck is this taper and why should I care? Well, this locks it in. If you, if you ring this together, these two parts will become inseparable. At least until you ring it back apart again. And then, yeah, you can have them separate again. But it's kind of difficult to wring them back apart and sometimes they become fused together permanently and you can't get them apart. Um, so we're going to attempt to make a shaft that is a Jacobs taper number two over here and a straight half inch shaft over here. It's going to look a lot like just a flat or just a straight piece of bar stock. It's going to look a lot like a half inch piece of bar stock with a very slight taper on one end. But you know what? If that's what works, that's what works. So looking at our table in the machinery's handbook, this end of the taper should be 559 thousandths and this end of the taper on this number two Jacobs taper should be 487 thousandths and six tenths and four hundred thousandths but I'm not grinding it down to that I'm just gonna get it down close enough I think 487 um, something like that it's a taper though it's not an angle it's a taper so you start at an angle here or, or you start at a, at a position here you go to a position here and there you go. Now, if I were smart, I suppose, I would trig out this taper and figure out how, um, how much I, I can go by going a little longer here. And I suppose if I were smart, I would maybe just go on Amazon and spend the 35 bucks on the part I want not sure I'm ready to do that though. Maybe. I hope I don't regret this. I hope this isn't foreshadowing. Oh well. So I've got this bin full of uh, stuff. Let's see. That's. Uh... So we're over here on the CNC lathe and the first thing I'm doing is taking this 825 stock and turning it down to 750. That would be thousandths of an inch because that's where I am in the land of the inch and the foot. If 
I were in the land of the centimeter and kilometer, I would be using those measurements, but here we are. So, first thing it's doing is it's uh, facing off the, the uh, stock, then starting the profile. It's starting its profile right now, and then it's going to cut the taper. Uh, and after it's done cutting the taper, we get to test it and see if it actually grabs onto the chuck, or if the chuck grabs onto the taper, you know. I guess we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Fits nicely. Ow. Okay, so that hurt. Um, that hurt a lot, actually. That's not dirt. That's a bruise all the way around. Yeah, I probably broke my finger, but I'm in America. I can't afford to get it fixed. So, on with the job. This taper isn't this taper. Um, I definitely screwed it up this time. Um, so uh, I'm gonna throw this in the bin, back to the drawing board. Sometimes pushing rusty metal through a collet is a little more difficult than you think it should be. So what I'm doing now is setting the Z and the X axis on the lathe. So basically telling the lathe where the tip of the tool is this is the z-axis I'm setting here, using the, the paper method. And once that sort of pinches, I know I'm 3.8 thousandths from the end of the part. And so that's what I punch in. So I've got three quarter inch stock, that's 750 thousandths. The paper is uh, 0 0.0038, so I add those together and that gives me the diameter that I enter into the machine, 7538. So I just took another look in the machinery's handbook and I was turning the wrong taper. Let me show you here. I was turning a 2A taper, not realizing it, and I need to be turning a number 2 taper, not a 2A. Yeah, that should fit a little better. It's basically the same dimensions over a longer surface, over a longer distance. Basically. Or maybe not. Anyway, I, I did the wrong taper. Well, it's like they say, if you first you don't fricassee, fry fry a hen. So we're going to really cook our goose and try this once more. Uh, clearly, I had my offsets uh, not set properly because that is 20 thousandths under on the whole thing. So now I've got to, I don't know, turn it into something else or scrap it. I guess I'll turn it into something else. So let's see how else I messed this up. This is supposed to be 374. What is 374? Ah. Well, there's a little bit of a hump right there in the middle. 
376, but I can cut that off there because I don't need much more than right here. So, okay. And this over here, that is 472. And this here is 532. So this part here is is just is uh, too small, too narrow to be that taper. So we'll make that into something else. Um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the end, and I will turn this into an end mill holder. So, uh, I had to get creative with how this, I'm going to drill a hole in this. So I think I'm on the center there. I'm going to have to double check that, that hole that I just, just started with the center drill. And... It looks okay. We can set it and focus on it. Yeah, it kind of looks okay. I guess we'll we'll see how that goes. Let's um, make more of a center hole there, and I can run the drill down it. And I'll have to tap it by hand. But yeah, I think this is going to work. Well, that worked surprisingly well. I got all the way through the, the first half and down to the shaft with that. So um, now all I got to do is run a tap down there. So let's uh, put some tap juice on that. These 440 screws I have just laying around waiting for a time like this. End mill in there. And the end mill still spins around. And it feels like I bottomed out the screw, so I think I need to go down further. There we go. Now I have an end mill holder. All right, well, it started out as something else, but, you know, I uh, had a few failures here and there, but we turned those lemons into lemonade, and now I've got a end mill holder that I didn't have before, so, well, that's, that's what I call a win. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to hit that thumbs up button, please. Always join us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Millbrook Railroad. More shop videos and other videos. See, that's not even straight. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It holds the end mill. That's all that matters. Thanks for watching.